Patrick? Weighing grain seems simple enough, but how do you recommend owners weigh their hay? Well, Jason, I recommend owners uh, prepare a weigh area uh, where they can set up a scale in their hay container so it's out of routine traffic. And then I recommend using a spring scale uh, such as this one that we talked about earlier when we were talking about scales or our digital fish scale. All right, as we talked about, you can devise some type of uh, uh, arm to hang your scale from. Uh, this one is a piece of tubing bolted to the wall, uh, but anything like that will work that allows you to have a yard arm uh, that you can hang your uh, scales from and then some type of device to weigh your forages in. Uh, we're going to use here a muck bucket uh, that has uh, a really nice tube through it with an eye bolt so that it's really handy. Slide that through, go to your scale, hang it up, you can see what it weighs. Other option, uh, they're very popular for feeding horses, uh, are these net bags. Uh, again, you can lay that out over your muck, muck bucket, fill it full of hay, weigh it either way with this or weigh the bag. Uh, Either way, you're going to get an accurate measurement on how much hay you're providing for your horse. Patrick, can you show us some weights for different hays? Yes. First, we're going to take and weigh this tub filled with flakes from a three-string Bermuda. Uh, the teared weight on this hay uh, is 10.1 pounds. Next, we'll try to fill the tub with a similar volume of flakes from a two-string alfalfa bale. The teared weight of this tub is 19 pounds, almost double that of the Bermuda. This tub is filled with wheat, with wheat hay that we forked in from a round bale. The teared weight of this tub is 5.62 pounds, or about half the Bermuda grass and about quarter of that of alfalfa. Finally, I filled this tub with flakes from a three-string bale of wheat straw. The teared weight of this tub is 9.68 pounds, which is similar to the flakes from the three-string Bermuda bale. Patrick, I guess I was a little surprised that the wheat straw weighed almost twice as much as the wheat hay, and that the alfalfa weighed so much more than the Bermuda grass. This certainly does illustrate how the bulk density of the hay is greatly impacted by how tight and heavy the bales are when they come out of the baler. Yes, the settings of the baler have a great impact on the final product that we feed on a daily basis. Patrick, I also took those hay weights you gave me and plugged them into my spreadsheet with the nutrient values for those hays. There are some interesting comparisons to make here too. As you can see here on the chart, when we account for the differences in weight per tub of hay between Bermuda grass and wheat hay that have similar energy values, the more densely packed tub of Bermuda grass hay has almost twice as much energy. Also, you can see because of the greater bulk density for the tightly baled alfalfa and the much greater nutrient content, that tub of alfalfa hay contains a significantly greater amount of energy and protein than the other hays. Again, this is important to know because not accounting for these differences over the long term can greatly impact the health of our horses. Patrick, beyond knowing we are feeding the correct amount each day, are there any other benefits from daily weighing of the feeds we feed horses? Absolutely, Jason. There are a few benefits to daily weighing your feed. First, you know that you're feeding the proper amounts of grain according to label directions, and this will make a more, more efficient use of your purchase feed by not over or under feeding your horse. This is especially true if you're feeding more than one type of grain or hay. Second, Weighing your hay makes sure that the horse gets consistent amounts of hay on a daily basis, even when you may have someone else feeding for you when you're away from home. Third, if you use the slow feed hay bags we mentioned, you can minimize the amount of hay wasted and you can extend the time it takes for the horse to consume the hay, which may have beneficial effects on horse behavior and the incidence of gastric ulcers in stall fed horses. Finally, by weighing hay on a daily basis, you can monitor how much you fed in a month, which will then help you monitor how much remaining hay supply you have and forecast how much hay you will need for the coming year. Patrick, thank you so much for sharing these tips with us today. Folks, remember the New Mexico State Cooperative Extension Service is here to provide advice and research-based information for your equine educational needs. That's it for today. We'll see you next time on the Horse Owners Minute.